Welcome to Getting Real, episode 15, podcasting. Today, guys, we are going to talk about what you should be trying to do when it comes to a podcast in 2024. Maybe you've thought about developing a podcast, don't know where to start, what to actually do with it, what to talk about, all those different things, but that's what we're going to break down here today on this episode of my podcast, getting real. Before we do dive into that, though, I have to take a minute to thank you so much for honestly changing my life this year. Your support, your listening to this podcast, watching this podcast is changing my life, and I'm so damn appreciative of you for doing so. When I look back six months ago, before I started creating content, before I had this podcast, before I did anything, proactively reach out to try to help real estate professionals grow their business to where I am today, owning a coaching company with agents across the country, all working together to help build each other's brands up. It is just startling to see such a dramatic change in only a few short months. We're battling through the hardest real estate market since 2008, and we're doing it together, guys. We're doing it together. Whether you just listen to this podcast, if you like it, you subscribe, you share it, anything you do to support it, I'm so damn appreciative of. We are fundamentally trying to change the real estate industry, redesign it for the better so less people fail, less people get out in under five years, more people find success, and more people create the type of life they got into real estate for. It's a pretty big mission here at Getting Real and at my Natali companies, but we're not going to stop until we achieve it. And you're a part of it by just listening to this podcast. If you take it a step further, I'm even more appreciative of you. So a lot of people will always tell you podcasting is the way to go. It's a great way to share your message. But a lot of real estate agents, and this took me a long time to kind of figure out what I wanted to do with it, don't know where to start, what to do, what to talk about, how to promote it. So I'm going to share some of the best practices and best best tips I have in this episode. And I honestly can't even start to sit here and explain things without thanking the person who actually helped me put this together. It's a good friend of mine I grew up with. He owns and runs a great podcast called Dead Talks Podcast. Name's Dave Ferrugio. He took about half an hour, 45 minutes of his time, went through his entire setup for his really, really successful podcast and broke everything down for me to make it as easy as possible. So I'm sharing a lot of what Dave shared with me and at the same time, things that I've done differently because every podcast will be different. Your audiences are different. Your setup, your abilities to set up your budget will be different. And I'm gonna kind of go through what I think you should start with because I wish I started a podcast five, six years ago when I first really wanted to. It was always a limiting belief of mine that nobody will listen to my message. And you may be thinking that right now, and I will tell you that is the exact opposite, exact opposite of what is reality. There will always be someone to listen to your message. Someone wants to hear from you. Even if it's five or 10 people on a weekly basis, guys, that listen to your 15, 20, 30, maybe it's an hour long interview. That is such a powerful thing for your business. So I'm hopeful more and more people get into podcasting in 2024 and don't let another year go by without getting it as part of their business and part of their content creation strategy. So first, let's talk about setup. Do you have to do what I'm doing right now? And if you're watching this on YouTube or any other video platform, you understand I'm on video. However, 95% of podcasts are audio only. Even some of the biggest podcasts in the world only shoot audio because having video, you need a lot more production. I have boom mics, I have backlighting, I have a nice wall behind me, I have a nice chair to sit in. All of these different things do cost money. We did this because I've gone so heavy into content creation that I wanted this, the video portion of this to be part of my content strategy when it came to video marketing. So do you have to absolutely do video? No. If you want to do video, do you need a professional studio and all this? I don't think you do, especially not with when I go down what I think your podcast should look like if you're a real estate professional trying to still help people buy or sell homes. You could very easily, guys, hook up your phone to your computer to have a very professional looking camera. If you have the latest iPhone, it's probably just as good as the professional camera I'm looking at or close enough that it really doesn't make sense to invest a thousand dollars just a camera. Now, do you need to do that? No, you could honestly get away with a really, really good mic plugged right into your laptop. You could do all sorts of different things and we're going to go down ideas, but it can be as basic as having a great mic plugged into your laptop, ready to go for your podcast. That's all it has to be. Could you use your phone? Absolutely. You're still going to want some lighting. You're going to need some sort of nice environment you can shoot in consistently. The reality is 
your the amount of effort a podcast is going to take is going to double or triple if you have to do it on video. The reason being is because you're going to have to be in the same location. You're going to want that location to be pretty consistent so your content looks consistent. And on top of that, if you have lighting, all this other stuff, it's got to be set up pretty consistently so your video format appears pretty close as each episode goes by. And also, it's not easy to just bring professional lighting, professional cameras, a backdrop, all these different places, wherever you are. So if you do go the audio route, you're probably in a big advantage early on. And that's what I wish I did. It's not necessarily like I wish I had the studio, all these different things early on. I just wish I personally invested in just starting something, even just an audio edition of a podcast five or six years ago. But it was a delay I had, and that's okay. We're making up for it now. We launched the podcast only a few months ago. We have tons and tons of listeners, and it's actually blown me away with how many people actually tune in to hear my message. Other things to think about when it comes to a podcast is hosting. Now, wherever you are listening to this, whether it's Apple, Spotify, Google Podcasts, any of the other 15, 20 different places you could possibly listen to this, you have to realize that all of it comes from one source. A very popular hosting website, which is the one I use, is Buzzsprout. Buzzsprout, what a hosting site does is you upload your podcast and it sends it everywhere. So you don't have to individually put it on each podcast outlet. That would just be way too time consuming. The video edition I put directly on YouTube. So you need a hosting software. A lot of them are pretty affordable. A Buzzsprout, I think is 12 or $18 a month. Uh, some of them that ha- might have some more features, might be $30, $40 a month, and or if they send to different sites. But the biggest places you need to make sure a podcast are, in my opinion, you should definitely have, if you're doing audio on two big places, that's Apple Podcasts and that's Spotify. Both of those places you can upload directly. Now, there are plenty of other places that people listen, though, and that's what I found through Buzzsprout, is a lot of my listeners, I'd say about 20-30% are not on those on those outlets, so you're missing a good chunk of audience if you don't. So that's why a great hosting software or hosting site will do a great job for you in getting your word out there. So it's definitely worth a subscription. So you're talking about you could just plug in a nice mic you could buy for 100, 150 bucks, $200 for a really, really nice one. Plug it into your laptop and boom, you could start a podcast tomorrow. Have it up for $12 a month. That's powerful, guys. If you're going the video route, I use a Panasonic Lumix mirrorless camera. I have Godax lighting. I have the Philips up lighting behind me. And we have this set up as a studio. Now, again, you don't need... This costs a lot of money, but you don't necessarily need as nice of a camera, as nice of lighting. You could get away with, like I said, if you have a really nice iPhone, using that, even just a, a three, four, five hundred dollar camera, something pretty nice that you could store a lot of data on. Obviously, having the SD card so it's not on your phone does help. And then, and utilizing either a ring light or cheaper lighting is a possibility. You don't need the best of the best. What we did when we developed this studio was we spent a certain amount of money and we realized, yeah, it looks pretty good, but we wanted great. We wanted great for our studio uh, because this is what, for me as the company owner, this is what our agents use to shoot content if they want to shoot a podcast. So for me, it was worth the money to keep investing more and more into having the best of the best products. However, that might not be the case for you. So if you want to go the most affordable route, just get a nice mic, plug it into your laptop, boom, ready to go. They have the the mixer slash tuners uh, you can plug into too, so you can pull the audio straight off of there if you don't want to host it on your laptop. That's perfectly fine as well. They're not that expensive either. And that's where you see a lot of people go down. If you watch TV shows, sometimes reality TV shows where they also have podcasts, and you see them go into film and podcasts, you'll see them. They just plug their mics into the recorder slash tuner slash mixer. And then they go and they bring it back and then they either have an editor or whatnot, edit the audio. And that's the next thing we're going to talk about. Because the one thing you're going to have to realize is you're going to screw up a lot, especially early on in filming a podcast. You're filming something for 15, 20 minutes. You're going to have a lot of mess ups. It's funny because I just screwed up about six times before I got this sentence out. You're going to screw up. You're going to make mistakes. You're going to talk for too long, realize you wanted to talk less. You're going to talk too short and want to kind of maybe talk a little bit longer. So you're going to want to go back in. You're going to need an editor for this and or you're going to need to take some time yourself to really look, to sit down and edit these things. So if you're doing video, that just adds a whole nother level. If you're doing audio, the, the edits are pretty easy because you're just cutting, putting it back together and then boom, you're ready to upload into your hosting software, which will get it everywhere. If you're doing video, you're going to have to also edit the video, make sure that not only things are said correctly, they also appear correctly. So I utilize an editor I found on Upwork. You can use Upwork, you can use Fiverr, you can use an intern, you can use a marketing coordinator, you can use an assistant, whoever is good with it. But most likely, if you're going to have to do a podcast at a very high level, or you're trying to envelope in video, you're probably going to want an editor uh, to be editing this because your your highest and best use of your time is probably not sitting there 
doing the editing yourself unless you have tons of time. If you do, then great. That's awesome. That's awesome if you can do it yourself. And if you can do it quickly, efficiently, all that stuff, then great. Get on it. You can even use CapCut to edit most of this, which is free. But if you want to step up your game a little bit, having a professional editor may really help you out as well. From there, guys, let's talk about what exactly should your podcast look like in 2024? Because the reality is a lot of people just don't know as a real estate professional, what am I going to talk about? And here's what my best idea would be for you. And this is exactly what I would do if I was starting a podcast as a real estate professional, trying to get business for my real estate business. Again, I am here sharing my best practices as a real estate professional all the way through my 15, 16 year career now, but I'm the owner of a company. I'm looking to recruit agents to come here and to want to be a part of this world. I'm looking to find talented agents to join our coaching program. I'm not necessarily the type of podcast you want to follow when it comes to, let me just replicate what John does. Unless you are a team leader and you're trying to recruit people or you own a company and you're trying to bring people into your world, but you should know what your audience is and who's going to listen to your podcast. And if I was starting a podcast today, here's exactly what I would do. I would sit down, I would take my laptop with me, I'd plug a mic in, or get realistically a mixer slash tuner so I can go to some of these locations. And I would go meet with business owners in the towns where I sell homes. I would go and interview them about their story. You could do this on Zoom. If you're doing it in a video, you could do it over Zoom as well and interview them and ask about their story. What it was like, you know, starting the business in 1987. What it was like starting it in 2015. What it was like owning a restaurant in 2020 when COVID shut everything down for them. And start meeting with specific business owners, small business owners preferably, in your local market and discussing their story, sharing their story. Because I'm going to guess there's no one else doing that right around you. And you're going to see six months in, if you do at least one episode a week and you've now interviewed 20, 30, 40 business owners, you're going to start seeing people really start to tune in to what you're doing. And there's going to be other business owners around that are saying, oh, you know what? I saw so-and-so was on the podcast. Kind of, you know, I'm hoping to join it as well. And I would share their, I would be all about the community and their stories. Say there's a, you know, high school senior that's doing a massive uh, community project and organize it. Interview, interview that girl. Ask about their story, why they're doing it. There's a guy who runs a pizzeria and he's done it successfully for the last 25 years. Everybody orders their pizza from him. Interview him. Do it on his time, obviously, because I'm sure he's a busy guy. Interview him about his story. That is great storytelling. People want to know that type of stuff, especially local in your community. I would end up making a podcast if I was doing it for myself, for my real estate business today. I would end up making a podcast, everybody local to my market, if they wanted to know what's going on with the local market, some stories about business owners, what's going on with community events, they would just tune into my podcast. I'd probably have two episodes a week, one interview with a business owner or someone of of importance in the community the mayor, the judge, the police captain, all these different things, I'd be that person that interviews them. And then I'd also have a what's happening this week in our area, video and or audio edition, where you could just kind of read off some events, talk about them. It could be a very quick episode. And that's exactly how I'd structure my podcast. And you'll see people in your local market will really respond to it. You could definitely add in a once a month market update to talk about real estate. So what kind of when they're just tuning in, they're going to get that content as well. I would not make it 100% focused on real estate every episode. I would just be that person in your community that's connecting all these different pieces. One thing I learned very, very early in my career is that if you are the connector to other businesses, other people, bringing people together, if you're that community, the center of that community, the center of that connection, man, you... It's not just about the income you make. It's just the the impact you have on the world is vast. So be that for your community and use a podcast to utilize that. That's the power of podcasting because it gives you some authenticity, gives you some equity with people. So when you say, hey, I'm Susie, I run an awesome podcast that meets with business owners in our town. A lot of people local around here listen to it. I'd love to have you on it. Who do you think they are going to lean on when it comes to real estate if you're that person? They're going to lean on you. You're going to interview these people. You're going to get to know all these different business owners. And this is your ticket rather than saying, hey, I just want to, you know, you've been running a successful pizzeria for 30 years. I want to have a cup of coffee with you to learn about business. Hey, I run a podcast and I'd love to interview because I think your story would be a fantastic one for people local around here to hear. Most people are going to jump at that opportunity. So it just opens the door and it opens in a different way and a much, much more consistent way for you rather than you start something and then it falls off 
This is something you can continue to build. And you're going to see pretty early on that it works. And the conversations you have are powerful. Even if you're just improving your craft, meeting with these other business owners, you're going to get better in business. You're going to get better in life because you're meeting other people that have been successful in your local area. And one of the bigger benefits of all this is you're going to have an entire episode and it could be a 45 minute, 60 minute interview. And in that interview, you're going to have probably three or four really good five to 10 minute videos and also to further your long form content. And then you're also going to have probably 10 to 15 great short form clips that you can do anywhere from 10, 15 seconds to 60 seconds or two minutes of the video in vertical style as well, if you do video. So if you invest in the video portion, this is also going to help you create all the content you're probably going to need in order to basically be posting very, very consistently. And that's what we talk about a lot, especially in my content is if you want content to be successful for you, you have to be consistent. So if you have a podcast that's already producing all these different types of videos that you could put out consistently from what you are already doing, it may be worth looking down the video route. If I were to go back, I would start audio just to start something. And then I'd very quickly pivot towards Zoom type of interviews to interview people virtually. And then maybe, yeah, I would invest if that's taking off a little bit. I would invest and say, okay, you know what? I'm going to get a professional lighting. I'm going to get a couple cameras, a couple chairs, and I'm going to set up a studio in X location, and I'm going to run this podcast as it should be run. And I'm going to have people come in and interview them. All of that great stuff can happen, but this is exactly how, that's exactly how I would set it up and how I would start it. I would not jump to level three because that's the mistake I honestly made is I waited too long. I should have been sharing this message in 2017, 2018, 2019, even as I was building up the massive real estate business that I was building. I had a plenty of, it was always a limiting belief for me that no one would want to listen. And even up until I started this, I said, you know, when I dropped the first episode, really no one's going to listen to this. Thousands of people have listened to this. And I think if you become the voice for your local market and you're that person interviewing everybody that need, that people need to know in your local market that has a great story, it's entertaining for people. They're going to tune in. You're going to be able to promote it on your town's Facebook page. You're going to be able to do all these different things. And you're going to be that connecting piece in your community. And a podcast could very easily be your ticket to being that connector. 